Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using this stamp set from The Greeting Farm. This is another stamp timber exclusive stamp set and it's called Pumpkin Spice It Up. I thought this would be the perfect stamp set to create a gift card holder and include a Starbucks gift card. So I'm writing some measurements off to the side here, which you can completely ignore because I'm actually not going to use those measurements. Those were just uh, what I thought I might use. But this watercolor paper is actually 10 inches long and I'm going to score it at four inches. I put my gift card in there just to see what the sizing would be like and decided that that would be a better scoring measurement than what I had originally planned. So I'm sliding that score line over to the side of that score buddy and then I'm going to score again at four. So both of these are scored from four at four inches from the edge and then I'm going to fold up that smaller section and that's going to create the pocket on the inside where the gift card goes. So I also needed to cut that down to be a little bit more narrow. And so this was actually cut to three inches. So you're going to start with a piece of watercolor paper that is three inches wide by 10 inches long, and then score it at four inches, and then score it at another four inches from that line. So four and eight. And then put it in my Misty tool. I opened it up so that I can stamp on the front of this gift card holder. I'm gonna take one of the images of uh, the little girl holding the coffee cup. And I'm actually going to stamp this twice because this watercolor paper is quite textured. This is some Saunders Waterford uh, watercolor paper that I had left over after I cut some down for a previous card. So I'm using up this watercolor paper. I'm using some Timber Brown Stays On ink. I'm using this particular ink because it is waterproof. And also I chose a brown because I'm using some more autumn colors and I didn't want to use a stark black. A black would look just as fine, but I thought using a brown would really lend itself to more of those golds, maroons, and browns colors that I'll be using later on. So then I'm gonna slide the whole piece of watercolor paper down a little bit so I can get the, the very short panel into my Misty tool. And I'm going to stamp the greeting that says Pumpkin Spice It Up. I think it's just so cute. Once again, I'm using the Stazon Timber Brown ink. And I'll, I actually stamped this twice. I don't show it in the edit of the video here, but I did stamp it twice to get a really good impression. So I'm gonna show you how this folds up really quick. And this is the basic, uh, I guess, building of my gift card holder. And I'm gonna do some watercoloring. And I'm going to do some watercoloring uh, in the background behind the girl and also on that smaller panel on the inside. So I'm going to mask off this girl right now because I want this entire area to remain untouched while I paint around it. And I'm going to do kind of a freehand watercoloring background. And so it would just be a little bit difficult to go around all these little intricate edges around the, the drawing of this girl or around the design of this girl. So I thought it would be easiest to add some masking fluid. So I'm using some Windsor & Newton masking fluid, I'm just applying that on top. And once I have that all the way on there, I'm going to set this aside to dry for quite a bit. Once it's completely dry, you'll be able to see all of those lines very clearly. So time passed, you can see now that all of those lines are very sharp and it doesn't look as cloudy anymore. That means it's completely dry. Then taped it down to a hard board and I just left about quarter of an inch on around each edge so that when I peel up the masking tape I'll have a nice border. I'm using some different colors of Distress ink today. I'm using some ground espresso, seedless preserves, fossilized amber, ripe persimmon, and crushed olive. And I'm first going to put down a layer of water over that entire um, smaller panel that folds up on the inside of the card. Then I'm going to drop in some different colors. The first color I used is Seedless Preserves, and I'm going to soften the edge of that with some more water if needed. And I'm going to speed up the video process here so this goes a little quicker. But I'm basically bringing in color along those edges, making sure the colors kind of overlap a little bit, and I just want a nice variety of colors. Then I'm going to hit it with my heat tool to stop the color blending and also make it so that I can add another layer of color on top. 
So I'm going to come back in with some more ground espresso and I'm just gonna move that around a little bit and bring in some seedless preserves across the top there. And also some more of that ripe persimmon, that or nice orange color. So I'll let that dry, just air dry, while I do the same thing on the larger panel that has the stamped girl on it. So I added lots of water and now I'm dropping in different colors. And I'm making sure that they're kind of mixing and melting and adding more water when it's needed to soften any of those edges. So I'm going to bring in my heat tool and dry this once again. And I'm, it's totally okay to heat right over that masking fluid. You just want to make sure you don't stay in one place too long. Then brought in some more color right on top, just like I did with that other panel. And I'm going to soften off those colors just a little bit. So I'm going to hit dry this once more. And then I'm going to come in with some clean water on my paintbrush and kind of just drop some on and kind of splatter it. Um, you, I added some droplets directly by pressing my wet paintbrush in and then I used a paper towel to sop that up and left behind water droplet areas which I think is really cool. So I'm now using some gold shimmer paint from this Fine Tech palette adding some areas of gold shimmer all along this background and I'm once again using a little bit of extra water to soften those edges. I also splattered on some little droplets. I put some of that paint on the edge of an acrylic block and then used my paintbrush to swipe it off and I get some nice controlled droplets. So I let that dry completely. You want to make sure it's completely dry before moving on. And then I used an adhesive eraser to help pick up that masking fluid. You can definitely just use your fingertips and rub the surface and it will start to bring up that masking fluid. But in my case, it was just a little bit faster to use an adhesive eraser. So now I'm going to paint the girl and I'm starting out with her skin. This is generally the order that I do when I'm painting people with Distress Ink. And I started with Tattered Rose. That's a nice rosy pink color. For her cheeks, I used Worn Lipstick. And then I'm going to add some shading using Vintage Photo. And those are my three kind of go-to colors when I'm painting a Caucasian person. Um, I really want to branch out and do some other skin tones, but I haven't found quite the right colors to use yet, so I'm hoping to do that very soon. For her hair, I'm starting with Scattered Straw. It's a nice golden yellow. And then as far as shading goes over this, I'm going to bring in some Walnut Stain. And I'm also using Walnut Stain for the shading underneath her to add a little bit of shadow so it doesn't look like she's just floating. So now I'm going to start bringing in that walnut stain on her hair. I'm doing flicking motions from the bottom and also her part in her hair. And that helps give it a little bit of dimension and shine. It gives uh, more of a curved shape to her hair. I'm going to add in more of that. Just lots of fun like flicking motions to get it into that area. As far as her clothing is concerned, I'm going to do some of the same colors that I've been using. I used worn lipstick on her scarf, added a little bit of shading with a sealess preserve, preserves. I'm using fossilized amber for her shirt. I added some uh, faded jeans color for her skirt, and then I colored her legs with those, those same skin tone colors. Now that I think about it, I never really did paint her shoes, so I guess those are white. <laughs> but then I added the brown tones to her coffee cup and then brought in some aged mahogany for the wrap or that band that's around the coffee cup. So I'm pretty much done painting her. I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool just to make sure everything is dry. Soften some of those edges on her face as well. And then I cleaned up my watercolor area and started to take off all of this blue masking tape. Some of the color seeped underneath, but it's such a small amount, I, did, I decided not to worry about it. There is also the other option of kind of cutting these panels out and painting them and then adhering them to the card base, the folded gift card holder base, if you'd like to do it that way. So I'm going to show this with what this looks like all folded up. And you could definitely uh, keep it just like this. Um, I am going to add a little bit of string to it here in a minute, minute but you could definitely leave it like this, just nice and plain. So to make this a pocket on the inside, I'm going to use a stapler. This is a Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher, and I know some of you are cringing. I hear about it every time in the comments when I use a stapler, but this is such an easy way to close up pockets like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if you don't want to use a stapler, you could use some brads or even some really strong adhesive, but brad um, staples are so strong 
and really easy to add. So I love to use staples like this to make it, make it very simple. So I'm adding some string around that to keep the entire card closed. And I'll trim that off with some scissors. And that pretty much finishes the gift card holder. I'm going to open it up so you can see what it looks like with the string still on there when I pull up the front flap. You can see the gift card inside. And then you have a message area right above that you can write on. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. Um, you can write on that area right above. Thanks so much for watching today's video. You can get this stamp set over at simusastamp.com. There are limited quantities of the stamp set, if you, so if you'd like it, you might want to act fairly quickly. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon. Thank you.